Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel Pints, where we take a quick look at something inside ServiceNow in the day in the life of uh, consultants. Dorian, awesome. what are we doing? Yeah, well, so first, I just want to say this is our first uh, LinkedIn Live, so shout out to yeah. anyone watching on LinkedIn Live. <laughs> I think I just got a notification. I was, yeah, there it is. It's on my phone. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's so, Today, we're going to dive into uh, the CSM configurable workspace. It's it's one of those like coveted space that ServiceNow tell you to jump right into and you can configure it. That's the, the configurable part of the workspace and and agent workspace is, is legacy. So um, this is all built in UI builder. So it's in you know John's neck of the woods with the new portal stuff. Uh, um, uh, but it, it is it is really hard to to, to utilize sometimes because it's built some things are in UI builder and that it's all in the back end as well as, as where it's stored, but it's hard to navigate those things. So what you used to do very easily in agent workspace is sometimes harder to do in CSM configurable workspace without some, um, some knowledge. And so today we'll focus on this side panel, the contextual side panel, and we'll do show people how you can add um, icons onto that, you know, uh, contextual side panel. Sounds like fun. Let's do it. Awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what we're referring to, if, if, uh, you haven't seen it before, this is the CSM configurable workspace. Um, and this is on the Polaris UI on the right hand side of, of John's screen is you'll notice that there are these icons here. Um, and what we're going to do is add another icon to it. And so the icon we're specifically going to um, add is the constituent verify. Um, so on an, in, uh, on an interaction, this, this icon exists, but it doesn't exist on a case. So what we're going to show you is how you could potentially add that icon to, to this one. So, um, so we'll, we'll do that going through the back end. Um, so there's a specific table, and uh, it's all named uh, with crazy letters. Uh, so it's <laughs> sys. <laughs> Uh, underscore UX, underscore uh, screen, underscore type. Yeah, and so um, again, like you, you should be able to configure this from the UI builder, um, um, but you can also configure this from the back end. And so what page we just navigated to is the UX screen collections. So this is where if you have a specific screen um, in, in those co contextual side panels, um, you could think of uh, you can think of the entire panel as a screen. Like that's actually the thing to the right of it where it says record information. That's like a whole screen, and you could have you know screens within that or components within that. And so, mm. so that's what we're 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 gonna talk about is the so we're going into the constituent verify screen. And then on the right where it says UX app routes. You'll see that um, on this list, you, you see the name of it, but on the on the right hand side where it says the parent macro component, that's essentially like what page do you want this um, uh, this screen or this app route to show up on, and and then next to it is like how do you want it to show up on it, which is that contextual sidebar. So if that kind of makes sense. Um, so we're gonna click on to the constituent verify because this would be relatively straightforward, and you're gonna to wanna to change your scope into the uh, public sector digital. In this case, yep. And what, all we have to do, and it's, it's super easy, is change the parent macro component. So John's gonna type in record. Oh. Uh, we yeah. can do with that. So record, yeah, and he's gonna click the first one, <laughs> and then he's gonna click the the little preview icon to make sure it's the right one. <laughs> That's the one that you know having to to switch views and stuff is such a uh, I don't know. I wish yeah. they came a little more going on. Awesome. And so the, the the application we were looking for is the base agent workspace. So that's this this works great. 
So um, interaction has a special page, and that's why it was showing up on the interaction one. So in your case, if you wanted to only show up for cases or only show up for incident, you would actually want to create a, a page um, that handles that, and you should probably do that in, in UI Builder. But we're just going to generically add it to, to show you the adding capability. So once you've, you've had that um, parent macro component. So if you go and insert and stay this now, Uh, great, now that should be it. And so now all we have to do is go back and refresh this page. And we should uh, get that contextual sidebar to, to show up on the right-hand side. And Look at that. You, know? you can click it on it. Yep, and if you click on it, it should load on the right-hand side. So, yep. And and that's, 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 you know, a quick way to potentially add a contextual sidebar. Um, Obviously, this is easier when things are already created for you. If you had to create your own, that's a whole other yeah. session where you'd want to do that in UI Builder. But this is, you know, how you would essentially attach it if it if it does exist in, in an easy way. Cool. Well, that's pretty neat. I mean, that's. <laughs> I know you mentioned there's a lot of stuff that uh, you should do in UI Builder and all that, but this was definitely a, a very easy method of um, adding uh, the uh, icons over here versus probably a much more robust method within UI Builder, I'm sure. Yeah, and this was not documented anywhere, so <laughs> it took me a very long time to figure this out. Yeah. Not so. documented, oh no, they could take... <laughs> well, awesome. that is, yeah, that is pretty awesome. I love cool. it. Yeah, and there's there's more. If we actually go back to that um, screen, we'll we'll give a little bonus uh, as well to this. Um, if you go back to the list view that you were at, um, one more. Probably more than one more. Is it not? Is it not like you? It does uh, not like me. Oh, oh there geez. we go. <laughs> yeah, history maybe, and go to the screen collection. Yeah. So if you go to the UX screen on this one, so we'll talk a little bit about the screen. And if you click on that screen um, and scroll down to the bottom, um, you'll see conditions. So even on screens itself, so not on the page of the, the record, but on the, on the screen that it's showing, you can essentially have whether or not it shows up in certain use cases. So if you if you click on it, this has a, a scripted one, or yeah, oh. this this is fine too. But essentially, like if you didn't want certain agents to be able to see um, this that contextual side panel, uh, you can write a scripted condition for it so that it wouldn't show up. So it doesn't just show up blanket for everybody. It would have to satisfy that. Well, I, I hope in next versions they add. You know how you have uh, in HR, you have, uh, oh, what are they called? Where you build them out for, you have a condition builder for um, audiences. That's what it is. Um, that would be nice if we could get, you know, something like that in here instead of having to script it. Um, I, I think you can. Well, so on UI builder side, you can definitely add audiences to pages. Mm -hmm. If you uncheck that scripted condition, I think it is a, a, oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> I was hoping it would be a, yeah, a, 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 a builder, but yeah. Well, it, yeah, and the only reason I even bring that up is just because, you know, you've got a lot of, you know, ServiceNow is making that move towards low code, no code. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a condition builder or an audience that's already been built would be a great addition to having it and say, you know what, I only I only want this audience to have to see it versus having to come in here and you know really essentially boils down to duplicate of, of effort right now you got to mm -hmm. script out the same thing that you have as a um an audience somewhere else and mm -hmm. so in my mind it, it would be nice if they could uh you know uh offer that solution here too yeah totally i, I think there the, there's going to be lots the the ux and the next framework is you know hot off the press in a lot of places. Um, so I think with more time, it's going to be just as robust as any part of the, the platform. So Yeah, and I'm excited for that sort of stuff because, um, you know, going back to that philosophy of the low code, no code, this is great for 
admins to get into uh, the the barrier to entry is, is is easier than you know having to do a lot of scripting and uh, things like that because you know not not all admins are adept scripters. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's kind of your, you know, three different categories of, of, of developers that I think Chuck just talked about in a, in a recent video of like, even your citizen developer, your mm -hmm. line business developer, and then like your, your pro developers, right? So there's, you know, you want to make sure that the experience is set for the, you know, the right audience there. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, uh, thank you for, for tuning in to our, our session. And if you like this one, let us know and we can explore lots of different areas of the yeah. configurable workspace. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's, it's definitely the future of, uh, of agents handling tickets and things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And shout out to anyone that joined us from LinkedIn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, thanks everyone. We'll see you.